Hello and welcome back to the channel for my Doctor Who collection update for November 2021. Apologies in advance that this is a bit later than usual, basically with flux airing and all the content I was doing for that, it just passed me by around out of time to do one of these at the end of November itself, and then rather frustratingly I came down with a cold straight after that, which sort of put pay to all YouTube projects really over the past few days. But anyway, never mind all that because we are here now and uh, yeah, lots of interesting stuff to go through this month. Lots of old releases and bits and pieces and oddities and one or two gems that I've managed to pick up in the past month or so which I would never really have expected to have in the collection so that's been really, really exciting to see. But as ever, let's begin with the most recent issue of Doctor Who magazine for November uh, with this lovely image of the rogue angel on the front. Loads of really great Series 13 or Flux content in here, you know, the episode previews and stuff from Chris Chibnall and whatever. Uh, there was the production notes column about, uh, there we go, about them finishing on the series, uh, finishing filming and on this era for good. So that was really interesting to read about. Uh, some great interviews as well about Swarm and Azure with the people that play them, uh, Sam Spirol and Rishanda Sandal. Uh, there's the Azure one. Yeah, some really great stuff, and it's great to see the 13th Doctor's era getting the limelight, uh, which isn't always the case in Doctor Who magazine, so that's great to see. This article from Jonathan Morris was very interesting as well. It started in the previous issue, and then this was the sort of second part of it, and it basically goes through all the comebacks that Doctor Who has made over the years, you know, a change of cast or whatever, change of writer, production team, and sort of comparing those different approaches. Um, so that's very interesting to read about. Some great stuff about the sets of Flux as well from... David Shermer, I think is how you say his name, the production designer. Loads of interesting uh, like concept art and just discussion about how those sets came about, the return of the comic strip as well. Uh, yeah, I don't want to show too much of this as ever because, you know, if you want to see what's in here, go and buy the issue uh, itself. But yeah, really, really great stuff. And at the time of recording, the most recent issue, the Christmas issue, the festive issue, came out just a couple of days ago and I've got my teeth sunk into that one already. Loads of great stuff in there and I'll be talking through that of course in my next collection update in about a month's time. We also have a book this month, uh, something I wasn't planning to pick up but basically I was in one of my local WH Smiths just a week or two ago and I thought I'd look in the clearance section because they occasionally have some Doctor Who gems in there and they had some of the Mr. Men books from a few years back. So they had the Doctor First and Doctor Twelve books, which I do already own. Uh, but they also had the Chris Freckleston one, the Ninth Doctor one, Doctor Ninth. So I thought I'd pick that up. I think it was meant to be reduced to three quid according to the shelf it was on. And when I got to the checkout, it only went for two. So uh, yeah, a win all round. And, and these books, you know, they're, they're so nice and, and cute. And, you know, I, I know the child me would love them. <laughs> yeah, not to say the adult me doesn't love them. I mean, they're, they're fairly nice, easy reads. Uh, but very charming. Uh, great to have in the collection. There are some of the other ones available. Uh, yeah, as I say, I have got some other ones. I think Doctor First, Doctor Second, Doctor Fourth, uh, Doctor Twelfth, and this one. I think that's all the ones I've got. So yeah, I have sort of taken the uh, the approach of getting them individually, which perhaps was a bit foolish because you can buy them as a set all together for like a fraction of the price it would cost to buy them individually. Uh, but hey, I've committed to it now and uh, yeah, I'm slowly plugging the gaps whenever I, I see them in sales or clearance boxes or shelves or whatever. So uh, yeah, great to be able to add another one of these to the collection and, and to the shelf. Next up, we have two incredibly exciting additions to the 5-inch figure collection. Uh, two releases from about a decade ago, two releases that are very rare these days, and I never quite thought I'd get my hands on, especially this one on the right. Um, just bonkers to even have these here in front of me. But yeah, the first one, I'll just put the first docs down for a minute, the first one was this lovely Sontaran. It is, of course, Sontaran Commander Store from the Invasion of Time. Uh, and this was really fortuitous, basically round about the time that War of the Sontarans was airing. I did a little spontaneous photo shoot with my Sontaran figures and I sort of put on Twitter, oh by the way, if anyone's got a commander store going spare, I would be interested because it's the only one I need to complete the set. 
And lo and behold, uh, Tom Jones on Twitter got in touch with me and said, yeah, I've got one of these going spare. He's a bit battered, he's been played with, but apart from that, he's been sitting in a box for a number of years. And, you know, basically he's yours if you want him, uh, which was just fantastic, an amazing offer from him. So we came to an arrangement and uh, he sent me this lovely Sontaran figure. And yeah, you know, he's got a few scuffs and bits on him from where he's been playing with over the years. Um, and he's missing his like swagger stick thing as well, but who cares quite frankly It's just fantastic to have this Sontaran figure alongside all the other ones uh, I'm yet to do a sort of proper group photo of them all together again But uh, yeah, it's just amazing to have this guy because you know boxed he goes for like 60 70 quid upwards. It's mad uh, Yeah, I think it retailed for like 35 quid back in the day uh, but I missed out. So really great to have Commander Store in the collection, especially you know at, at the time that the Sontarans are making such a, a massive, amazing comeback on TV in War of the Sontarans, then obviously uh, subsequently in the Vanquishers as well. But let's put him aside just for a moment because sitting right next to him here is something just as exciting, if not more so. Uh, yeah, I think this does trump Sontaran Store. As exciting as Sontaran Store is, this is the first Doxa from an unearthly child, of course. A variant that goes for such stupid money these days. And a variant that I have always, always wanted. Because, let's be honest, this is the definitive look for the first Doxa. You know, with his cloak, and with his hat, and his donut blazer. Just fantastic. What an amazing silhouette, you know, this figure has. Uh, and yeah, again, it was really fortuitous, just a massive coincidence really. Uh, the Celestial Toy Gazer on Twitter got in touch with me about this one. He had one going spare, in the box, I know, amazing, mad, and he was prepared to part with it. Again, he came to an arrangement with me, a little trade, and uh, yeah, just amazing. I, I can't get over the fact that I have got this figure, to be honest. It is like the most exciting addition to the figure collection in a long, long time. Obviously, of course, this figure is being re-released, or indeed has been re-released at the time of recording, in the uh, very hot off the press, newly anticipated first Doctor and TARDIS set from the most recent B&M wave, which was due in mid-October, and is finally making its way to stores. Uh, but nevertheless, I was really keen to get hold of this. I wasn't going to say no to this offer, because the new version of this figure doesn't include the cloak, doesn't include the cane, obviously, because B&M sets hard ever I include the accessories, at least for the Doxa figures. And uh, just generally, I don't think the, the new variant, which obviously I don't have in hand yet, but I don't think from the photos I have seen of it that it has quite as good a paint job as this one, particularly on, on the face. Uh, so, yeah, it's just amazing to have both of these figures in the collection. Two figures that I never really thought I'd get my hands on and uh, yeah just really great to come one step closer to completing not only the, the figure lineup as a whole but the coveted lineup of classic era figures some of which are so hard to come by these days and these are, are two examples of, of sort of the rarer figures from that line so really really fantastic and a massive massive thanks once again to the Celestial Toy Gazer and Tom Jones for allowing me to uh, add these figures to my collection. Next up, we have another unexpected addition to the collection, and something which dates from even further back than those decade-old figures. So these guys were released in 2003 to mark the 40th anniversary of Doctor Who, and they're part of a range of uh, miniature die-cast figures released by Corgi. Uh, obviously more famous for doing like, little cars and stuff, I think. Uh, obviously die-cast as well. Now, these had sort of been on my radar, but never seriously. I'd never sort of seriously considered buying them. I don't recall ever seeing them in shops. I mean, I might have done in years gone by, but, you know, before I was interested in the classic series or whatever, so I not paid attention to them. But basically, I saw a tweet from Five Who fans uh, on their Twitter page, which had a photo of the merchandise available in Forbidden Planet Manchester, uh, which is one of my local Forbidden Planet stores. And yeah, basically, from out of nowhere, <laughs> Forbidden Planet Manchester now suddenly seems to have a load of old stock that they're trying to get rid of. So they have these die-cast figures, some other die-cast figures as well, which I'll show you in just a second, and some other really weird stuff, like the spinning TARDIS bubble bath from the RCD era, uh, which this time round, I will admit, I did pass up on the opportunity to buy, but I was tempted, you know, just to, just to see what it was like, uh, just to have in the collection if nothing else, and to see 
what it was like inside the bubble bath all these years later, uh, dare I actually look. Maybe that's something for the future. But yeah, for the time being, I just settled on these two die-cast sets. So first of all, we have this Corgi set uh, with a sort of Emperor Guard Dalek from Evil of the Daleks, a very timely, obviously, with the recent animation release. Then this Davros, which is sort of vaguely based on Remembrance of the Daleks, I guess, but isn't quite accurate, but never mind, still a really great figure. And then this one here, which I guess is meant to be like the Supreme from like, the Daleks Master Plan or something like that. Or again, all these Daleks are inaccurate to some extent. But yeah, nevertheless, they're really nice. I, I, I love them. Uh, I think they look really great on the shelf. And I was very pleasantly surprised by them. And uh, you know, not least to see they're still available. What, like nearly 20 years on? It's mad. Uh, but yeah, some really nice additions to the collection. And they are limited edition, actually. Uh, so if I just put those there for the moment. Yeah, this little card came with them in the box, which I wasn't aware of, but apparently this is number 6704 out of 10,000 distributed worldwide. Um, so yeah, they are limited edition, but at the same time they are still available pretty widely, so hmm, not quite sure about that. But nevertheless, it is, it's nice to know which one I've got, I suppose. And then the other set of miniature diecast figures available alongside them is this lovely set of a Dalek and a sort of Cyber Cyberman, both from the early years of the revival, obviously. Originally released by Sci-Fi Collector, I believe, and sort of commissioned by them. It was sort of exclusive to them for a number of years, I think. But again, it's one of those things where, you know, they perhaps made a bit too many of them. And so I've got all this excess stock still being sold all these years later and turning up in Food and Planet. Uh, but hey, I'm not complaining because at the time, these were not something that I, I ever planned to get or was interested in. Uh, but obviously now, all these years later, I am. And uh, just like those other diecast figures, they look really great on the shelf. Very pleasantly surprised by them. And uh, not least actually because, uh, like those other, other Daleks, I should probably have mentioned, but they do have articulation, well at least the Dalek does, so it has articulation on the dome and the eye stalk a little bit as well and the, the sucker and the, the gun and stuff. Uh, the Cyberman is just one static piece but it does have a sort of removable stand uh, with the Cybus Industries logo underneath. So yeah, two really nice little figures. Uh, I'm sort of tempted to get the other ones that were released in this range. I think there were some bigger versions of the Dalek and the Cyberman, uh, possibly in two sizes, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, if you know more about that than I do, then please do let me know in the comments. But yeah, attempts to get more of, of, of those and also more of the Corgi ones as well, because there were other characters released in that line, like the Fourth Doctor and other variants of Davros and the TARDIS and, and K9 possibly as well. And a Bessie, I think, in a uh, sort of exclusive VHS sets or DVD set of the Three Doctors. So yeah, wasn't expecting to add Doctor Who miniature diecasts to the collection this month, but uh, very glad that I had the opportunity to do so, and they look fantastic on the shelf. So I can highly recommend these if you see them going in a shop, whether that be for Planets Planets or, or elsewhere, or even online, because they are available online, both these sets, uh, relatively cheaply, I think. So uh, yeah, I can highly recommend these if you didn't get them when they were originally released. Continuing the theme of metal die-cast figures, or figurines, uh, we have some figurines from the Doctor Who figurine collection. Uh, so four 13th Doctor era figurines added to the collection this month, because basically um, I haven't ever subscribed to them or collected these properly. Uh, it's only very recently that I've, I've actually got a few of them actually. Uh, basically just because, you know, let's be honest, character options have let us down a bit with 13th Doctor era figures. And as someone who has a bit of a soft spot for the 13th Doctor's era, I thought to myself, yeah, you know, Eagle Moss are making these characters, I might as well just cave and, and buy them in the smaller scale instead. You know, yes, they don't go with the character options figures, it's not the same scale or anything, uh, and a different material, you know, metal and plastic, but what can you do? Uh, at the end of the day, you know, these are the next best thing to having these characters in the 5-inch scale. And what I usually do is wait until they are reduced or in certain sales and things. Uh, so this first one, Ribbons of the Seven Stomachs from It Takes You Away, he was reduced to like a fiver in a ForbiddenPlanet.com sale. Uh, they quite often reduce them on that website, so you have to keep your eyes peeled and see. I think the cheapest I've seen them go is like three quid, 
uh, which is is mad for these little figurines. Well worth your money, well worth your time. Not a figure that I was absolutely clamouring to get hold of, I will admit, but I was sort of pleasantly surprised by him. I mean, paint apps on the face could be better, you know, the eyes and mouth and stuff, but let's be honest, for the scale, it's not too bad. And the coat and the bag and everything is all very convincing in terms of the sculpting and the paint. So, uh, yeah, a nice little addition to the collection, and that is the first of four figurines that I got this month. So the following three figurines were all from the official Eagle Moss website uh, from a sale they were doing a couple of weeks ago now, where some of them were down to like a fiver, and there was an extra code that you could take off like 30% or something, so a pretty good bargain basically to get hold of these guys uh, for that price. But yeah, the, the next one was Tim Shaw, uh, the second variant of Tim Shaw to be released by Eagle Moss. So I did already own the first one, which is him sort of in his weird sort of like crouching pose uh, with his mask on and um, so it was always sort of inevitable that I'd pick up this one as well with his mask off just to sort of complete a little duo and um, I think of the two it's difficult to say which one's the best really you know let's be completely honest here the paint apps on the face are not amazing by any means they're sort of let down ever so slightly I think but that side and you know, just covering up the face the actual body the sculpting again and the paintwork is really nice and I was also very impressed by how these uh, tubes here and the mask are actually a separate piece which has been stuck on uh, but I didn't get that from the photos I didn't realize so yeah that was a nice little surprise when I opened him up and, and saw that um, so yeah you know a nice little gap plugged again like with ribbons not a figure that I was absolutely clamoring to get hold of and probably not one of the strongest ones overall in terms of the, the paint ups on the face uh, but the, the body is pretty convincing it's, it's nice to have Tim Shaw at the second variant of him by far the most convincing and most lifelike out of all the figurines I picked up this month is this guy, a dreg from Orphan 55, that's acclaimed episode. Now aside from the fact that the uh, the skin tone is a bit off, I think it would be fair to say, because on screen they look considerably more grey than this, and it might be that the original costumes in person do look this colour and are this colour, uh, but just on screen they, they didn't, so it is a bit off-putting, a bit distracting. But that aside, uh, yeah, the actual sculpt of this particular figure is just phenomenal, really. And it really helps not having, you know, a human likeness uh, to recreate for the head. Having that slightly more stylized, you know, mouth and face and, and, and skull and what have you and head. Just really, really spectacular and really convincing. And you know, the, the dregs as, as characters, as monsters, really lend themselves to the, the figure or figurine uh, format as well. So yeah, very, very pleased to have this guy. And he sort of towers above all the other ones as well. He's very tall and very imposing and, and, and quite scary, really. Another great addition to the collection, this time from Series 12. And then the next one is also from Series 12, a character that I think it'd be fair to say a lot of us have been waiting for for a long time in the uh, five inch figure range. And I basically got impatient and thought I'd buy her in, in this line instead, the next best thing, because yeah, this is a character that we want to see in the five inch range for so long. And for whatever reason, it doesn't seem to be happening, which is a bit of a shame. It is, of course, the Fugitive Doctor as played by Joe Martin. Again, another very timely addition to the collection, given her recent appearance in Flux Episode 3, Once Upon Time. Now again, the paint apps on the face are not the best, let's be honest. It doesn't look a whole lot like Joe Martin. And the hairstyle as well, it's not quite right, I don't think, that the sculpt of that. But the, the actual body and the coat and the gun are all very convincing. And to be honest, it's just great to have the Fugitive Doctor represented on the shelf in some form, because as I say, you know, character options, what are they playing at, quite frankly? You know, not making a figurine of this new incarnation of the Doctor, the only incarnation, out of the ones we know of at least, uh, to not have a figure. So yeah, pretty poor form from character, but great to own her in some form or another and to have her represented on the shelf at long last, because yeah, it's an incarnation that I think we all love. And uh, yeah, can't get enough of really. So really great to have her in the collection. And then to finish off, we have something very peculiar indeed. Um, so yeah, this is what it says on the tin. Uh, a range of Doctor Who collectible keychains. Again, sort of die cast in, in metal of some description um, and pretty like coated with I don't know, something shiny to make them look more expensive than they actually are. But yeah, these were manufactured or, or released rather by 720 the uh, US company responsible for monstrosities such as the 3.75 inch 13th Doctor figure, uh, which came out a year or two ago. 
Not sure whether they're still like, in business and doing stuff for Doctor Who, whether they've still got the license. Um, it's anyone's best, really. But what we do know is that these keychains, which were released, you know, a year or so ago, um, but went under my radar completely because it was a US exclusive, they have now finally appeared in the UK by complete surprise, complete chance. They have started cropping up in B&M stores, uh, the infamous B&M bargains, of course, where five-inch figures have been sold now for many years. So I don't know whether it's 720 kind of wanting a piece of that action, if you like, and thinking, oh, yeah, we're, we're going to sell some stuff in there as well because that'll be successful and the fans will buy it. And, and let's be honest, you know, I have. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, Doctor Who stuff in B&M, if it's cheap, I'll probably buy it, you know, the, the chances are. Um, and, yeah, these are only 250 they're harmless, they're nice enough, they're nothing particularly special or amazing. Uh, some of them are, are very, very odd. Uh, like, I think the 10th and 11th Doctor keychains in, in this collection use sculpts that were originally made for the vending machine figures that came out like uh, five years ago or something like that. Um, very, very weird to see them making a comeback in, in this form. So firstly, we have uh, a Fez <laughs> with a little Doctor Who logo on the keychain and, and Fezes are cool emblazoned on the front. And this one's a sort of like bronzy, coppery colour. And then the second one was this uh, version of the TARDIS, not based on any particular variant of the TARDIS, I don't, I don't think it's just like a generic TARDIS, uh, but again that comes with a little logo on the keychain as well, and it's a sort of silvery colour. Um, so, you know, these are nice enough. I would say, you know, if you're into this sort of thing, uh, if you see them in B&M and they float your boat and take your fancy, then yeah, why not? You know, they're, they're 250 each. They're perfectly harmless, nothing special. But uh, at the same time, they do have a certain sort of charm about them. I mean, personally, I'm not actually going to use these as key rings. I wouldn't want to get them damaged or anything like that. Um, but I have actually thought to myself that when the time comes to put up my Christmas tree any day now, they would double up quite nicely as little Christmas decorations. You know, the, the hook here, or the, the ring rather, would double up quite nicely as a little hook to hook them onto the branches, and, and then they could just hang down like that and look nice on a Christmas tree. And I have bought two more of these, um, so yeah, you'll be seeing more of these in the future as well in the next collection updates, and uh, hopefully I'll complete the set, I guess, as well in, in, in due course. So there we have it for another month. Everything added to my Doctor Who collection in November 2021. Very, very pleased with everything I've got in front of me here. And uh, yeah, very nice to be surprised by little oddities and, and bits and pieces like that as well. You can never quite predict how, uh, how these collection updates are going to turn out. As always, there will be links to all of these items where applicable in the description in case you want to get hold of them yourself. And please do also let me know in the comments section what you've added to your Docs Who collection in the past month or so. I'd love to hear all about that, whether it's new releases or old releases or a mixture of the two. Please do also like the video if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you again in about a month's time for my final collection update of the year. If not before, uh, because I might do a Christmas one. Haven't quite decided yet. It depends what I get, I suppose. But yeah, whatever the case, there will be at least one more of these before the year is up. So you've got that to look forward to. And of course, other stuff on the channel as well in the interim. But until the next one, thank you so much for watching. And goodbye for now.